Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock, and that can only mean one thing. Trump week. I'm Tim Apicella, and I'm your host today, and I'm here with Jay Fidel, who's another host. Jay, welcome. How are you? Thank you, Tim. It's great to be here with you. It's very important that we discuss Trump week. This is the week that was, man, I'll tell you. Were you watching? I have been watching, not as much as I want to, because I have another job at the time. And so uh, that's getting in the way of me watching history being folded, unfolded before the, uh, you know, the history of the uh, as live TV. And it's, it's being unfolded, and guess what? I'm missing it. Yeah, and that's okay, uh, because the, the flavor of this is already established, isn't it? Um, the flavor of this uh, seems to be that the, everybody's in lockstep. I think I'm going to have a, a tattoo on my arm. It's going to say 5347. Um, 53 votes uh, with, with Republicans and 47 with Democrats. It never changes. They went through eight possible amendments, all of which were, you know, uh, valuable, important, um, valid. Um, and, and every single time the Republicans voted against it, 53-47. What does this mean? What do you take from this? Well, I mean, you've already said it. They've been in lockstep. And uh, this, this actually is a, a holdover from the, the House hearings. Um, I've seen no crack in the veneer, so to speak. Bottom line is one of the more important votes that was taking place yesterday, which uh, was denied, 53-47, was the, the idea that John, John Roberts would decide um, whether or not something would go or not. And they voted that down. So they don't want an impartial judge to look at the proceedings and whether or not it's valid to bring in an evidence or not valid to bring in evidence. They don't want John Powers, uh, Justice Powers, to, um, Robert, excuse me, to make that decision. Now, isn't that odd? It is. And, and uh, I mean, I think that was directed mostly at Bolton. Um, and uh, the reality is that Bolton was right there with Trump. He's a very good witness. Uh, and he definitely should be testifying here. Um, he, would, he refused to testify in, in the House, in the House proceeding, and uh, there, were, there were all kinds of misstatements and lies about that, I must say, uh, in the remarks made by the Republican uh, lawyers. Um, but now he's not going to get a chance to testify in the Senate either. I'll bet you five bucks right now he never testifies in the Senate. I, I, I wouldn't make that bet at this point. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, so yesterday we had a full 11, more than 11 hours of um, both sides stating their case. Uh, how do you think they did, particularly the introduction with uh, McConnell and uh, Schiff? How do you think they did? Well, I, um, my, I didn't see the whole thing as you, I have other things, but, uh, but I did see a lot of the um, arguments made on the motions and in general by the Democrats, by, uh, by Schiff specifically, and also Nadler. And uh, Schumer, he didn't argue so much, but he was involved in the in the effort, and um, I must I must say that they, I thought they were brilliant, they were right, they were correctly stating the, you know the points that needed to be stated, uh, they were speaking in the right tone uh, to the country, and they were speaking beyond just this uh, Senate uh, trial, they were speaking about the future of the the Constitution and the country, and I happen to agree with what they were saying, so um, I think it's I think it's very important. Um, you know, that, that they said those things. Regrettably, regrettably, uh, the Republicans did not do nearly as well. Uh, they made really cockamamie arguments um, and they, they were wrong and they were mistaken. And in many cases, they were obviously lying, lying about things that we know they knew about. Uh, so it was very hard to listen to that. It was hard to listen to the Republicans. Right. I, I, really, I really zone out when when somebody's lying to me and, and making it sound like it's truth. It's the alternative facts again. So um, if you ask me how the Democrat um, you know, team did, I would say they did really well. And I said to my wife over and over again, these guys are top, top flight. They well, I think first class lawyers, yeah. I think they took the time to lay it out and lay it out in a way that not only are the senators gonna understand it, because you do have two audiences here. One is obviously the senators. But the the bigger audience, the most maybe the more important audience, is the American public, 
and whether that's yep. going to come into play here for this this trial or come into play 10 months down the road for the election. But that is the, the audience that we have here. And I, I quite frankly think the, um, the Republican senators um, are, are taking note to that. And also, I think that as they laid out the case yesterday, I think the Republicans were flat-footed. I, I don't think they prepared well enough to respond to how well the Democrats, uh, Schiff and Schumer, how, they, how well they laid that out. They don't have any arguments and they don't have any evidence. So they, they don't have a lot to work with, I must say. So they come up with these cockamamie arguments that are that go nowhere. And and the question is whether people watching, because a lot of people are watching, even though McConnell tried to put this in the middle of the night, uh, fact is that a lot of people are watching. It's uh, hard not to watch, at least for me anyway. But one, one of the most interesting elements is, is that somebody, some I guess it was a news reporter or someone asked Schiff, why, why go through all these motions? Why try to amend the, uh, you know, uh, McConnell's, uh, you know, rules uh, for the for the proceedings? Why do you, you know, you, when you know the result is going to be the same each time? Why do you do that? And Schiff's answer was very core. He said, because we want the public to know what our evidence is. We, it's like an offer of proof in court under the federal rules. It's an offer to say, if we have a chance uh, to submit evidence, this is what the evidence will sh show you. So let us submit the evidence. But in the meantime, he's telling them, he's telling the Senate, and he's telling the public, he's telling the world what his evidence is and what will come out. And that was his uh, methodology. That was his strategy. And I think it was really good, really well done. Well, and I, I think what's interesting is if that is the crux of the argument right now, um, that evidence is not going to be submitted either in the form of witnesses or documents. And it, it seems that the Republican response to these two articles of impeachment um, are not disputing that which is laid out. They're just saying it's a nothing burger. Don't look this way. There's no there's been no crime. We don't disagree with what's been laid out. Uh, we just disagree the fact that this is not an impeachable offense. So if you if you follow that line of logic, okay, um, so why not allow the evidence in? If you already agree that the, the evidence isn't really the issue and it's just the overall charge, then why not allow the, the, uh, the evidence into play? And I, I don't yeah. know if that's hitting its mark. Well, its mark isn't the Senate because the Senate is all under Trump's control. And a lot of this goes to the obstruction point. Um, you know, because if you did look at the evidence, especially the uh, the GAO uh, determination that what he did was against the law, that's a government agency saying that, a government agency well equipped to say that. Um, you know, I don't think there's any issue, but that he broke the law and he, he should be acquitted on what, rather convicted on what he did. However, however, what we are seeing in the Senate is a continuation of the obstruction. Because Trump is the guy that is telling all of them. Uh, you know, to, to not take evidence, to not hear witnesses, and to vote in a block 5347 on everything against the Democrats, against the case, against the impeachment. Uh, this is just another expression of that obstruction. Now, the question to me is, what about the guy in middle America? Let's say he's either independent or moderate, and, you know, he's not, he's not committed to one side or the other. Uh, what, what effect does this have on him or her? And I think the answer really should be, if we still have a, a sentient population, a sentient electorate out there, I'm not sure these days, um, you know, that it would be, my God, uh, these people are trying to cover everything up. They don't want us to know what happened. Uh, they are obscuring the facts, the evidence, and they're lying about the, uh, you know, all the events that took place. And so um, I, would, I would be outraged about that. I would be outraged about that now. Uh, I would be more outraged if, and I think this will happen, uh, the Senate votes to acquit. Um, and finally, I would carry my outrage uh, forward to the elections in November, not only for Trump, but for every senator who did this. This is such a violation of, of good order, of, uh, of morality, of the Constitution, of all of the things we hold dear, these guys, 53, 47, um, it should be emblazoned on their mind and memory. They should be 
living in this 5347 world for the rest of their lives, no less their careers in the Senate, which I hope will be short. Um, one of the interesting things that, that occurs to me is um, the thing about um, uh, the mystery witness um, um, who you know, said he would testify, he's not so mystery, uh, Bolton, who said he would testify uh, for the Senate if he was subpoenaed. And then the, uh, the Democrats make a motion uh, to have him subpoenaed and the Republicans vote against that. So Bolton will, will probably not be called, or at least that motion has been tabled and uh, they'll vote against it later and 5347 and he won't, he won't testify. And now Bolton, we know Bolton is motivated by book sales. He's writing a book and he wants to you know, get that book out. And this is every time his name is mentioned in these proceedings, and it has been mentioned many times, um, it's more likely that he'll sell copies of his book. So the question really is, how does his book play on this? Um, he's not gonna publish his book until after, I think things are oh, over. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That's until this is all done. And then, he's gonna, then it's going to be popular. I mean, I, I wouldn't buy it as a matter of principle. I don't want to hear what that man has to say. Yeah. But I think a lot of people in the country will buy it, and he'll have big book sales, and it'll have a, well, a big effect. And there'll be others, too. You know, evidence is going to come out after this, this forthcoming acquittal. Well, it's How already that coming out in dribs then? and drabs. It's, it's, it's coming yeah. out as we speak. Um, the Freedom of Information Act is, is kicking in and all these documents are, are rolling in. But the argument that the Republicans are stating is, well, you should have asked for this stuff when you were having the impeachment hearings and you didn't do it. You didn't, you didn't, get the, uh, you didn't go through the courts to, to get Bolton and, and McVaney and, and Giuliani here as witnesses. You should have gone through the court system to resolve that. And that's what the courts are set up for. But let's forget the most. Let's not forget the most important element of that. It, it takes months and months and months to actually get a decision to have this adjudicated, of and it's of not being adjudicated quickly. So therefore, it it would be well after the election before this uh, these decisions would have been rendered. So the argument is, we would love to, but uh, we don't have time. We don't have any time to do that. And then the second thing that I thought was a travesty is the fact that they're trying to do a. Uh, a trade, if you will. You you give us Biden's uh, son to come as a witness, and we'll give you we'll give you Bolton. Um, what is that all about? Uh, Biden's son has nothing to do with the direct implication of Trump's guilt or innocence. Right, I mean it's it's a distraction. It's a Trump a Trumpism, a Trump distraction. Which actually, you know, brings us to Trump because he's he's behind all this. He's got a nose he's in behind, this, absolutely. He's behind uh, the machinations that went on during the House hearings um, about how they refused to appear and testify. No government agency gave documents. All these people were acting terribly um, in violation of the Constitution and the clear separation of powers in the Constitution. I don't know how they can live with themselves. Um, they should have the 5347 emblazoned on them on them too, because they participated in this cabal. Um, so, so, so now information will come out. It is coming out, uh, and after the forthcoming acquittal, um, we will we will see it leak out in which ways, books and who knows documents. Uh, how will Trump react? I mean, he's he's had a full court press going on for a long time to stop anything from coming out. He knows he's guilty. He knows he should be impeached. But he drills down and he, you know, is on a full, full tilt campaign to stop the proceedings against him. So now assume he wins in the, in the uh, Senate, because he looks like he's going to do that, actually. Um, and it's after the acquittal. And on the one hand, he's going to say, I, I was vindicated. I was exonerated. I am innocent. That call was just perfect. Perfect. You, you hear me? And then, okay, he's going to try to do the same things. But it's worse, Tim, because, you know, he's going to see himself as uh, a president who is not responsible to anyone who can do anything he wants. Now, he's always felt that way, um, but the government has not, you know, agreed, admitted that, that he can do that. There's still resistance, at least to some extent, not in the Senate, but at least in the House. Um, once he's uh, exonerated once he's uh, acquitted uh, he's going to be 
you know, much worse. Uh, he's going to be liberated to do this every day, and nobody will be able to stop him. This will change our government. We'll change our country. Uh, it's hard to imagine all the things that he is going to do, and it's hard to imagine how they are going to affect you and me and all our friends and neighbors. We're going to be living in a different place when he's acquitted. Well, you know, Jay, I... So, oh, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I, my question to you, if you don't mind discussing it, is what is he going to do, if anything, to stop this information from coming out? Because obviously this is the tipping point. He's acquitted. The information is inclined to come out. People are outraged when they read Bolton's book and other things. Um, and, you know, it doesn't look good for him in the election uh, or in the re-election of those senators. Uh, so what does Trump do? Because he's not going to sit quietly on the side at that point. He's going to have a strategy to deal with this information and how to put it down so it doesn't affect the re-election in November. What do you think he's going to do? Well, it's a two-part answer. Um, the first part of the answer is going to go to something you said a little bit earlier here. And that is, I don't compare this, uh, his ability to say, I'm exonerated, I'm not guilty, it was a perfect call. He's not going to get away with that as easily as he did. Remember when the Mueller um, case was squashed and he said, I'm exonerated and, it's, you know, I did nothing wrong. Um, it's very easy to counter his argument by saying, you aren't exonerated. This trial was a sham because no evidence was ever admitted. We weren't able to bring in witnesses or documents. Therefore, your victory lap dance, uh, it's, it's not valid. So I think he's going to have a hard time with that counter criticism that he's innocent and it was a perfect call. I don't think that goes easy for him. Number two is um, he's going to get these, these again, this, this flood of new documents from between now and the election. And I don't think he's going to be able to stop it. And I don't think he's going to be able to counter the books that are going to come out. I think he'll do what he's always done, and that is name call somebody, uh, come up with a nickname that you normally come up with in third grade, and just repeat that nonstop and get his um, his agents, if you will, his his lackeys, his loyal his loyal lackeys to do the same, and just drum that in day in and day out, name calling and say how you know no credibility, false information, fake news, witch hunt, um, and they'll just keep on that bent. But, you know, at some point, that gets old. And even the Trump supporter may go, you know what, there was a lot of smoke and I saw some fire here because I didn't see a trial. I saw a sham. I keep waiting for the people to rise up. Um, but, you know, they, they really haven't. And, and 5347 shows you that no senator um, was impressed with um, constituents who told them not to do that. Um, they all they all operate under McConnell and Trump, and Trump ultimately Trump. Um, so he's been successful, and you got to give him that. He, he, he's well, fighting a war every day. You know, even his trip uh, to uh, Davos in Switzerland, talk about economics, um, was only a distraction. It's part of his um, way of dealing with with an impeachment. You know, you, you have an impeachment trial, go to Davos, go to Switzerland, ignore it. Yeah. Um, but the fact is, he's, his agents and his his lackeys, as you said, are, are working on it. So I think I think two things are going to happen after the um, after the trial is over, uh, and I'm assuming that it will be an acquittal because there's been no defections so far, uh, really at all. Um, one is. Um, that that remember he has um, commandeered uh, all of his agencies. Uh, there's nobody pushing back anymore. Seems like to me, the State Department he owns it. Um, you know he's he's shown that he can hurt them and beat them and punish them, and he's got he's got a Secretary of State who is behind him full tilt. The Department of Justice, same thing. It's been hollowed out. Um, you know, even even FEMA, even FEMA has been hollowed out. There's there's no actual director of FEMA yet. And of course, we have scandal after scandal about how Trump has dumped on Puerto Rico. Um, and then you have the Department of Education. Um, you have, gee, I mean, every federal agency, the military, uh, the Joint Chiefs. Anybody pushing back there? 
No, they go along with him. Everybody's intimidated. So that's one thing. And he's going to continue the same policies, immigration, homeland security, same thing. He's going to continue the same policies with the people who respond to him and who he can intimidate. And so we're going to, we're going to see more of the same, but worse, because he's going to know um, that nobody will stop. The other thing, and this is what I really worry about, is that, as you said, the risk for him is this information coming out, whether it's coming out by newspapers, books, it'll come out of the media, um, you know, C CNN, MSNBC, what have you, um, the Washington Post, the New York Times. He's been attacking them and attacking the press, and successfully so for a lot of medium-sized, um, you know, media around the country. He owns the FCC. Oh. Anyway, what, you know, what is very troubling is he's, he's going to have the opportunity to attack the media. And I'm telling you now, in my opinion, he will attack the media. He'll spend a lot of time attacking the Times, the Post. Uh, he'll call them the same names he's called them and worse. Uh, he'll take action against them through his attorney general and one trumped up lawsuit or another. Uh, he'll be fighting with them hand and fist try to you know um, undermine their credibility and their their business model and their connection with their readers and viewers so um, that's going to be a big problem and that leaves that leaves critical thinking on the part of American voters yeah. uh, many of which who have been disenrolled thank you thanks to the efforts of the Republican Party well you know uh, let so, me react to that for a moment and that is yeah he's going to criticize the press just like he has for the last three years. But, you know, at some point, it's an, all, it's an old song sheet. And the effectiveness of that criticism starts to lose its power. And we're, we're, we're actually, between now and the next 10 months, the hearts and souls really is the independent voter. And they haven't made up their mind about Donald Trump yet. In fact, they're starting to lean the other way. I was watching um, some independents in Arizona. You know, that's a highly contested state. It's a critical state for that Senate race, and independents are being interviewed, and they all said the same thing. It's obvious that he's scared and he's concerned, and that's why he's not letting, letting evidence in on this trial. And they, they were acknowledging that he's got something to hide, and for good reason. And they're also acknowledging that the protocols of the Constitution are not being followed. Congress has been stripped of its authoritative powers, and they're seeing, they're seeing the, the reality of that. So it's the independent voter that's going to make the difference here. And I don't think by attacking the, the, the media day in and day out wins any points for those independent voters that will probably get out of their armchair and go to the polls in 2020. I sure hope you're right. And that is the bright spot here, that maybe in this formerly great country of ours, um, there are enough voters who see clearly uh, based on what's happening. And maybe... Um, you know, Trump's um, calculation and McConnell's calculation is all wrong. Um, they're, they're trying to, uh, you know, make this a, into a, a sham trial successfully. But it's so obvious what they're doing. 5347, over and over again, even when these, these motions to amend McConnell's rules are so reasonable and so appropriate that the guy sitting in his armchair in middle America will see this. He will watch this thing in the middle of the night and he will see this and he will remember this and he will use critical thinking to find, to realize, as you say, that this, this president, this administration is all wrong. They are guilty of sin and they have to go, including all the senators who backed them up. Um, we have really, yep. we got a hope on that. I, I, I don't have a lot of confidence, Look. but hearing it from you, Tim, it's, it sounds like something that actually might happen, and that would be the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, let me, well, before we get to that light, let me ask this question. Given after most likely Donald Trump will be acquitted here in this impeachment trial, what does that do regarding the further divide of our national our population? Republicans versus Democrat, what does that do for the national divide? What does that look like? You know, I, I was telling you that uh, Frontline, I admire them very, very much. They're a journalistic organization and they, they make, um, you know, documentaries for PBS mostly. 
you can look at their documentaries, um, you know, on on the web for free. Um, and they made a couple of documentaries. Each one, well, it's one series, two hours long, two separate documentaries. They call the America the Great Divide, and it's a sort of an examination of of how this divide appeared during in connection with the Obama administration, and how Trump saw that and took advantage of it, and he's exacerbating it during his administration. It, I think it's very good reporting. It's very, I, I hate to use the word balanced, uh, because balance sometimes is, 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 is a way of favoring one party or the other. Um, but I think it's, uh, it's well done, it's factual, it's thoughtful, um, and this is something that every American ought to watch. And what it says in large part is that the divide in this country has existed for a long time. It has emerged uh, during the last few administrations before Obama, uh, where people really, you know, they, they go after each other. They, they don't respect the views of the others. Uh, and they're, they're, they're supremacists. Um, they fight like hell about everything. Uh, they lock up in these contentious discussions. Um, they're bigoted and uh, they're, they're not helping anybody. And, 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 and Republicans and Democrats is one divide, but there are many, many divides. Uh, Putin would be happy to see how many divides there are because divides in the country, in any country, and he's trying to do it with other countries, as he is trying to do it with us, I'm sure, um, divides, you know, divides make a country dysfunctional or non-functional. And that's exactly what's happening in this country. And I don't think people realize how dangerous and, and um, you know, destructive it is uh, to have these arguments about everything and never give up, not even to obey the rules of, of the courts uh, and to have Congress, um, you know, uh, um, um, ignore its separation of powers and its power to oversee the president. So what, what we have here is a general decline. And it was, it was emerging during Obama. He kind of gave up at the end. You have to watch the, uh, the Frontline series. And Trump, who takes advantage of it and makes it worse every day by uh, making people hate each other. It's, a, it's an administration of hatred. We can't continue that way. The country has to come together. The fabric of this country is based on the social compact where we all agree on fundamental principles that are in the Declaration of Independence and that are in the Constitution. You want to tear that up? Oh, we'll all pay a terrible price. And I think unless we do something, we, all of us, every single one, unless we do something, we're going to, meet, we're going to have to pay that price and it will be awful for every one of us. We have lived in this, you know, all of our lives, lived in a country, country that was largely um, you know, dedicated to the Constitution, the rule of law, and a certain morality, a certain fa fair and equal uh, kind of, you know, as expressed in the Declaration of Independence uh, and in the Constitution and in the amendments to the Constitution. And now we seem to be ignoring, turning our back on that. You know, where you go from here, this is a great concern. It goes beyond Trump. It goes beyond this trial. And it is revealed now. And uh, well, all I'm saying is this is a moment in history beyond what people are saying it is. It's not just throwing a president out. It's not just changing the guard in the, in the legislature or in the courts. It's saving the republic. Well, I think the first two hours of today's trial, Adam Schiff laid out your, your points very, very well, that this was beyond today's trial. And this is beyond President Trump. This is the... Uh, this could foreshadow things of things to come with other presidents. And I think he did an excellent job laying out those points. Well, I can see a whole bunch of more information that, or a whole new topic that we could discuss next week or in the week after that, just on that point alone that you brought up, Jay. Um, I'm concerned too. But until then, we'll have to discuss it next week. Uh, we're out of time. So I'm Tim Apicella. I'm here with Jay Fidel. This was Trump Week. Come and join us next week. Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Aloha.